What's up, Squirrelgers? It's Nerp here, and welcome to another video. So, I haven't had a ranked match video in a while, so I guess I'll do one today. And I am six points below Tajik for number one. Obviously, I'm not as concerned with being number one anymore because I did get the Minecraft cape last week because that was my fifth, uh, fifth week at number one since Wookiee Winners came out. But I still would like to um, be number one in the ladder. I don't know. It's still a cool thing to do, even though I've got the highest reward for it already. And unfortunately, it still feels like grave locks are extremely OP. Um, the latest uh, patch on the test server, it like nerfed Curse Decay, which is grave locks only like weakness kind of, and grave locks the best deck of the meta. The deck that I got to number one and two with was not touched at all. If anything, it was buffed because they buffed Gravelock Burrows, but nobody really uses that anyways. It's not really buffed. But Gravelock Energy is still amazing, so I'm going to use it again. I know my like past, like I don't know, like three or maybe even more Grave uh, Rank Match videos um, had been me playing Gravelock, so it might be not that interesting, a little repetitive, but I want to give you guys a a uh, video of a high level game because I haven't done that in a couple weeks um, and I'm not I'm not comfortable using a different deck although I'm usually comfortable using like any popular meta deck Gravelocks just if I want them, if I'm going for one of the latter I need to use Gravelocks they're just above above all else right now so I'll be back when a match is found alright we found a match so let's head right into it Palsicon um, I've never heard of you before, but good luck all the same. Hopefully, he is high rated enough for us to gain enough points if we win to move into number one. And he is growth. Alright, at least I didn't have a turn one better. And I'm going to keep this hand because I have a two drop, and a three drop, and an elder, and a potion resistance, which is amazing against growth. And I'll get rid of the early fury. He's right now I have a nice curve up two, three, three, five. I mean, yes, I'd rather this outcast be like a uhu or something. I mean, yeah, uhu. And let's see if he has a brave or something else. He has a brave. So now that kind of sucks, but I have a burn. So do I want to put the smuggler in? He can move. Just move right down towards it. And then I would have to pl place an outcast in front, and then I would get hurt a little bit. Hmm. Let's do it. Because, I don't know, maybe, maybe he's not really an advanced player and he won't move down and engage me. But I have a potion resistance and I have a burn. So if I play outcast this turn and then burn the next turn, and then an elder, I'll be in pretty good shape. We'll see what he plays this turn. Hopefully he doesn't play like another Brave. It's interesting, like I'd rather him play like a play like a three drop, like I think. Yeah, I don't know. Would I rather him play like an Earthworm Mystic or another Brave? Alright. Uh I'm I'm very happy with the Ranger's Bane, because I he this could have been dead easily anyways. So and now I can just play I'll get rid of the Vance Parcel and I play the Gravelock Outcast. Unfortunately, we sacrificed the other Gravelock Outcast, so I have no play for next turn as it stands besides a burn. But burn is a pretty good play anyways. So hopefully, he doesn't veteran us before we get the Elder out in two turns. That's a little problem with him going first. Okay, hopefully he doesn't sacrifice the resources, that would be nice, because that means he won't have enough resources to veteran later. Don't sacrifice the resources. Don't sacrifice the resources. Because once I... I guess he doesn't. Alright, so this guy is going to survive veteran. I mean, there could still be like a Ragged Wolf Crimson Bowl, but... You know. Up there's a Ragged Wolf right now. And he's probably going to... Hmm, I think if he played the Ragged Wolf, he would probably move down with the Brave, because he expects the Brave to take it out afterwards. Interesting. But I will burn this turn, and its question is do I want to get rid of the outcast or the potion resistance? Potion resistance is really nice. 
but outcast I might need the other grave block I think push distance against growth just kind of stops him in his tracks so I'd rather do that so let's see is he gonna have like the the double ragged wolf or something but now you are gonna be in veteran range like even with an elder out but he can't play veteran in two, until two turns so let's see I suspect he will move his sister the fox down like so at least he's like engaging with two creatures he goes to resources and he goes to guy okay that's probably what I would have done as well and a brother of the wolf up there so we can't burn that guy unfortunately uh we're just gonna get the elder out this turn which I had like another burn but it doesn't really matter Get rid of the machinated of two potion resistance right now. And what do I want to play in front? I could play the elder in front. If I play the elder behind, this thing is gonna be vulnerable to a veteran next turn. Play the elder in front. I don't want the elder to take a lot of damage, that's a problem too. If he veterans, then he could kill the elder with a quake. I'm going to play the Elder in front though, because I do have a Potion Resistance, so next turn I can put something in front of the Elder with Potion Resistance, and I'll be in very good shape. So let's top deck like a Uhu or something, or another Outcast, or Guard, just some, just another Gravelock, please. Oh, you know what would be bad here? Earthen Mirth. Yeah, that would be really bad. I kind of wish I had the outcast in front now. I'd rather be vulnerable to a veteran than have an earthen mirth to destroy me. I need sacrifices for scrolls. So let's hope it's not an earthen mirth. Even if he played a veteran this turn, he would go down to one health. That wouldn't be too good. Okay, well, Nagness, that's good. That means this guy is going to survive. And another Nagnest. So those Nognes, uh, four health can be hard for me as energy to deal with those. I do have a Copper Automaton. Two Potion Resistances, holding out to them is a bit of, a bit overkill, so I'll get rid of one of those. And... I don't really have a big, a good, a good play here. I really wish I top deck a Gravelock. Besides Freak. I could Fury Copper Auto. I could take out one of these and take out you. Um, should I do that? I'm taking out two cards and I'm playing two cards. Sure, why the heck not? I'll take a potion resistance on you so you don't die to a veteran. Alright. That wasn't like a great value play. Whatever. Next turn I can go Freak, which will be amazing, especially if I have like a potion resistance unit in front. I'm tempted to have the Freak in front though, because even though the Elder's potion resistance is much more valuable than the Freak. And it's good that I put Potion Resistance on this, because if I didn't, he would be able to veteran it. Still going to attack with the Ragged Wolf, it looks like, or maybe not, maybe he's just going to take out Middle Idol. No, he's going to attack it. And the Rat King. So let's draw Thunder Surge, please. Mm -hmm. Alright, he's going to have like a filled board. Okay. And he separates a little bit for Thunder Surge. I'm just going to go ahead and play the Freak now. And even though you have Potion Resistance, I think I'm just going to move you back a little bit now. Yeah. I'm going to take it center of the board. That's very important. Okay, so now he's a lot of stuff on the board. So I would mm -hmm. really like... A thunder search to come up and him to 
fall right into it. I mean, all these little creatures don't do a lot of damage, though. And he's only at four resources, so he's not like, I'm not threatened by any god hands or anything. But if he gets some Crimson Bulls out, he could deal a lot of damage to me and my idols. I'm kind of hoping I get, even if I don't get a Thunder Shirt, I'm about the Spursal, it wouldn't be too bad to take, take out the Birth of the Wolf. Or replace somebody else's turn like a Great Wolf. He's kind of clumping up here. Not sure what he has up his sleeve. Is he in like a rally or something? That wouldn't really do much to me. He didn't sacrifice yet, so yes, he can play rally or something. Maybe great wolf, veteran. Okay, you're gonna go down to four. Okay, now draw thunder surge. Thunder surge would be amazing here. Thunder surge. I summon the. All right. Well, I got like my second choice. What I said, the Vault dispersal. So I'll do that. Another potion resistance is kind of nice though before the freak, but too bad I don't have enough resources to play both of them. So I'll just play one. I'll get rid of you, and you still. Have you still have potion resistance for the, another turn. So I'm actually going to move the freak away a little bit so that it doesn't doesn't die to like a veteran or some kind of crimson bowl or champion ring or something like that. But now if he has like a ragged wolf or or a veteran or actually a rally this turn would hurt me a lot cuz he could use both these knocks to kill that and then he'd have all three of these creatures take down the gravelock elder. So, I kind of I I already regret moving that uh, freak up, because now I'm really vulnerable to like a rally. Hmm. Okay. Well, he moves like that. What's up here? Sacrifices for scrolls. veteran okay well i guess that's fine then i was um anticipating the veteran on this row at least because it would have taken out the elder it doesn't take out the freak i'm tempted to just go sacrifice the resources and play snargle omelet and then just put like a grave lock in front but then i lose the potion of resistance and I think we need the potion resistance. So I'm gonna sacrifice the omelet for scrolls. Another elder and a potion resistance. That's a very good draw. A very good draw indeed. And what is that? It's a second veteran. We could see another veteran. Um I think I'm gonna put the elder and potion resistance. Do I give up this freak? I'm considering giving up the freak. All right, yeah, let's, let's kind of give up the freak here. Let him take it down. Cause otherwise my units will be, would be awkwardly positioned. This way I am losing that strong creature, but whatever. And we could go omeletting next turn if we want. I would still like a Thunder Surge. Um, this outcast in back has been a little bit annoying because I'd rather have him in the front because he's not as valuable as these three guys. But he got stuck to the back early on because I had to protect him because he was like... He had less health earlier, but... You know. But I feel pretty good that I have two elders there. Actually, this row is just pretty, pretty much invincible because I have the potion of resistance on the front elder protecting the other elder, and now casting. They are attacking next turn, so I should be able to take things out next turn. And if I'm safe enough, I'll just go ahead and go omeleting. The safest way to eat snargle. Really. Straight from the egg. Well, actually, Stormlight Omelette. I guess the omelette 
is the safest way. If you eat it straight raw from the raw egg, you might get like food poisoning or something. All right. Okay, so it deals one damage to him and takes out the freak. Lockling brood. Do we snorkel omelet? Nah, we're still we're still searching for our thunder surge, and I'll keep the lockling brood. Sudden eruption. It's not not as not as great. I will. I haven't seen any enchantments from him yet, so I kind of feel safe playing this Lockling Brood. So I'll do that instead of the Mount Dispersal. I don't think I need to play Mount Dispersal. He's not a huge threat right now. I mean, if he, I mean, even if he like rallies this turn, I'm pretty pretty safe. Use the Spotion Resistance. Next turn, maybe sacrifice resources and play Sudden Eruption. If I draw a Power Trip, then I'll probably play a Sudden Eruption. I have two or three Power Trips in the deck. I place Fertile Soil on the attacking Ragged Wolf, I guess, because the other guy, the other guys have three health, so they'd be more like, more likely to survive, anyways. Which is true because my Sudden Eruption would not kill them. But one attack units are the ways to ping down Potion Resistance units. And now he has a lot of, now he's like ahead of me in resources and scrolls, so I have to hold my own here. All right, so oh yeah, he did have that enchantment. He had Ranger's Bane. Mm, let's get rid of the Copper Automaton, because wherever I put the Copper Automaton, it kind of is going to be maybe attacked. So let's get rid of that. Now I get a Thunder Surge, so it's good to hold on to that. I'll go ahead and take you out, just run away a little bit, and take out the 4 health unit with Fountain Spursal. I don't need to take out the units that's directly attacking me because the Potion Resistance is still on the altar for one more turn. And this following turn, hopefully I can top deck like another solid Gravelock to play with the guard. Or if he like threatens me with like Rat Kings and stuff, I could just play Thunder Surge or Sudden Eruption if I draw power. So I have, so I have options here. I'm feeling pretty safe for this match. He goes up to 8. Fertile Soil. So since he has f at least 2 Fertile Soils in this deck, and Rat Kings, and, uh, and Ranger Spains, I feel like he might, and Brother of the Bull too, kind of, he might have Quakes too, because this might be more like a mid-range to late, late game growth deck but seeing that he played a, a racking down there right now not even protecting the idols it tells me he might not have a quake though probably has a probably has a god hand though god hand for the soils kind of go together like over the sudden eruption because i think with us staying up here we'd probably be forced to clump up on the bottom so we should be able to take things out like that. And two Thunder Searchers is pretty good. I'm not going to play any of them though. I'm just going to play the Guard and the Smuggler. And how do I want to do this? I guess I'll keep that Elder in the front. I don't love that Elder in the front, but I'll do it anyways. You know what? No, I don't want the Elder in the front. I'll go like this. I'll, t I'll give the guard up if he, if he has a veteran or something. I don't mind. I mean, not the guard. The uh, I don't mind if the smuggler dies. Why don't I disperse the idle damage a little bit? So if he's a god hand this turn, he couldn't really do much. He could take out my guard. He has a lot of resources, a lot of scrolls. Even though he has a racket on the board, if he has a quake, he'd probably be inclined to play it. Going for resources, it scares me a little bit because it, but that means he probably has something in mind he wants to do. I 
All right, he moves up there. That means he's going to be a little clumped, probably, so I can go with a nice value Thunder Surge. I have Power Trip. I could play next turn, but I, I won't be able to get up to uh, mm -hmm. up to enough resources, so I'd get the Cantrip effect from it. So I'm a little shy away from playing it. He has Sister of the Owl, so this is definitely more like a old-fashioned growth deck, not really, not really the super aggroth type or enchantment heavy. Alright, so we can get a really nice Thunder Surge off. And I'm going to get rid of the Power Trip. Um, I'll keep both Thunder Surges. And uh, instead of playing the other, and I have more beefy Grave Locks to play the next turn. So and how do I want to position? I will... You can have 5 attack, you can have 4 attack from a God Hand. So I don't want to really move down anyways. I will just all right I'm gonna slowly get you up to the middle <laughs> and Thunder Surge and middle idol is almost down I actually didn't really want to do that because if he has like a double Ragged Wolf Crimson Bolt he could do that but I think he already played multiple Ragged Wolves this match so or maybe not, because maybe I'm just thinking of the Ragged Wolves that came from the Brother of the Wolf. We shall see. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you if you have, like, Thunder Surge is kind of like a card that if you're already ahead, you can put down any kind of a comeback that growth kind of throws at you. Or other factions, too, because while you have, like, control of most of the board... Your opponent has to build up their forces in one corner of the board where they'll be have well, uh, where they will have no choice um, other than to build up being all clumped up. So you can really get nice thunder surges off. When you're behind in the match, then you you want thunder surge to be a comeback for you, but it really isn't against a smart player because they'll be using the entire board spacing out their units against energy. That's when power trip is like that. That's when power trip is effective. I mean. There's a sister of the fox. Is sister of the fox another another sign of a more late game, mid game growth deck? I mean, he's already at nine resources and he hasn't even gotten them from like venture letters. Also, this this uh, is also a sign of it. But unfortunately for him, we're gonna have a board clear here. No use in having two who's uh, sacrifice for resources. I know we're gonna play the thunder surge. Actually, can we win? Not quite. We're close. But uh, how do we do this? I can take out middle idol. Okay, we're pretty darn close to winning. Uh, I am going to move down here. I might, even though I'm moving right into the Sister of the Owls attack line. We should be good, though. So back to back Thunder Surge just really stops growth pretty hard. Now all we have to do is hit that middle idol for one damage. Maybe I missed lethal that turn, I'm not positive. And we have an iron whip to get more of my units attacking to be sure we can take down that middle idol. These units are also in death by iron whip range. Okay. Pal Seacon. He goes for scrolls. He only has four scrolls, but he is at nine resources. So if he has the correct cards, he can make a big play. Okay, well, I guess that is a decent god hand, but that's going to be game because I have an iron whip. Is it possible I can get more than that, more than those idols? Fury Machinated, that will work, I think. Fury, and then I can Iron Whip and Machinate. GG WP. So, I got a lot of gold from that. 
That's from the tier three spinning in the deck that plus 126. Moment of truth, did I gain at least six rating? Exactly six. That puts me at a tie with Tajik for number one. And it lists his name ahead of mine. I'm not sure how that interacts with weekly winners. Will both of our names, will we both get this badge? Will only Tajik get it because his name is on top? Why is Tajik's name on top? N comes before T in the alphabet. Was it because he was there first? I don't know. If anybody has answers to these questions, get back to me because I'm confused. So, um, that'll be it for uh, today. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.